Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number eight from the January 2024 Statistics S1 exam from Edexcel International A-Level. This question here is about discrete random variables. And um, normal distribution. It's actually really about normal distribution, most of this question. So it says the random variable x is normally distributed with a mean of mu and a variance of 36. So x is such that it is normally distributed with a mean of mu and a variance of 36. So that means a standard deviation of 6. Right, so I'm going to write it like that because a lot of people will start using 36 instead of 6 for their standard deviation. So the standard deviation which is given sigma, is 6. So it says, given that the probability that x is greater than the mean minus 2k and less than the mean plus 2k is 0 0.6, find the value of k. So I'm going to use the normal distribution curve. Okay. Um, so we have the mean which is mu, all right? And we have the mean minus 2k, which would be down here somewhere, 2k less than the mean, and then we have 2k more than the mean, which will be over here somewhere. They'll be symmetrical, okay? There's some, it's, it's kind of like in the same relative to position to the mean, but one's above, one's below, because it's, this is the mean plus 2k, and this is the mean minus 2k. And it says that the probability that something lies in this region here between those values is 0 0.6. So the, the probability of this is 0 0.6, which means the probability of this part would be 0 0.3, which means the probability of this part will be 0 0.2 because a half of this is 0 0.5. So we can say that the probability that x is greater than the mean plus 2k mean plus 2k is going to be 0 0.2 the probability that something lies in this region here okay is going to be 0 0.2 all right so we can find the 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 value for um, z we can find the z value of this okay, by use, using the table. And we can, in fact, use a table which has these more exact values okay, because um, you know, we, can, we don't have to look on the left. We can look at the right for the small table. We can, in the small table, as you'll see from here, okay, this small table, we have the probability of 0 0.2, which is one of our probabilities which are in this small table. So... This small table tells us this is the area to the right of this z value. So the z value we're looking for, which is over here somewhere, okay, the area here is 0 0.2, so the z value is 0 0.8416. So we can take that. We can use it here. Okay, that's the z value that we are looking at. Okay, so we can see that the z value here is going to be 0 0.8416. Okay, so that's, so we can say that um, basically our standardized score, okay, um, is 0 0.8416. And that's equal to, okay, the actual score, which is the mean plus 2k, minus the mean over the standard deviation okay so we know that z equals x minus mu over the standard deviation that's the formula for standardizing a score so we have the standardized score we have the actual score we know the mean we don't know the mean but we know the standard deviation is actually equal to six so i can put that over six okay so here we can find what k is because mu minus mu is zero so we'll end up with um K over 3 is equal to 0 0.8416. So K is going to be 3 times 0 0.8416. So we found the value of K. 
Okay, so we got a calculator, three times 0 0.8416. And that gives us 2.5248. 2.5248. Did they tell us how to round it? They didn't. So we'll round it to 3SF. So we can say K is equal to 2.52. Okay, and there's the answer to question number eight, part A. Okay, now for part B. It says the random variable Y is normally distributed with a mean, okay, um, sigma and a standard deviation sorry, a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma, given that 2 mu is equal to 3 times sigma squared, 2 times a mean equals 3 times a standard deviation squared, and that the probability that y is greater than 3 over 2 times the mean equals 0 0.0668, find the value of mu and the value of sigma. Okay, so I'm going to take this and use it on this side. Okay, so now, how do we deal with this question? This looks really weird, but um, let's, let's focus on this first. The probability that y is greater than 3 over 2 mu is equal to 0 .00, 0 0.0668. So if the probability that y is greater than that is equal to this small area, then that means this value 3 over 2 mu must be somewhere over here. It must be somewhere on this side, such that the area to the right of it is... A small area way less than a half so this area if this area here is 0 0.0668 then this will be 3 over 2 mu 1.5 mu okay so that's 1.5 mu okay so this is the mean and this is 1.5 times the mean okay so that is uh, the, you know the situation from here so what can we what can we get from this? Well, we can get the z value of, we can get the z value of this. We can get the standardized value of this. So we know that z is equal to x minus mu over the standard deviation, right? So the z value such that the area to the right of this is 0 0.0668 will be the same as the z value for which the area to the left of this would be, this area over here, which would be, 1 minus 0 0.00668. So that what does that give us? 1 minus 0 0.0668. That gives us 0 0.9332. 0 0.9332. Okay, so that is the area on this side. And why do I have to use the area on this side? Because this is not one of those standard areas that we'll find in the uh, big table, in the small table. So we've got to go to the big table, and the big table, the, the, the areas we have are the areas to the left of the z value. So the z value that we need is going to be to the left of this. So we're going to go back to this table here, and we're going to go to the big table and look for 0 0.9332. In fact, I can see it right there. It's right at the top, 1.5. When z is equal to 1.5. Okay, so we've got here, okay, so you have 0 0.9332, so we can see that z value here is going to be 1.5. Okay, so we can say 1.5, our z value is equal to x, which is 1.5 mu, minus mu over our standard deviation, which we don't know, so we have 1.5 is equal to, this is going to be 0 0.5 mu over our standard deviation. So we can say here that 1.5 times the standard deviation is equal to 0 0.5 times mu. Okay, so I guess this will be 3 times the standard deviation is equal to mu. Mu is equal to 3 times, if you multiply both of these by 2, you'll get this. Okay, so that's one equation which we have now got from this information. Now we have another equation as well. We have uh, 2 mu. 2 mu is equal to 3 times the standard deviation squared. All right. So we can try to solve these two simultaneously. Okay. Um, 
So what we can do is we can replace the mu with 3 times sigma. Okay, I guess we can do that. So we have 2 times um, 3 sigma is equal to 3 sigma squared. That's going to give you 6 sigma is equal to 3 uh, sigma squared. Three, 6 sigma, sorry. Do that again. That's going to give you 6 sigma equals 3. I'm not very good at writing sigma, sigma squared. Okay, so that will be, if you divide both sides by sigma, 3 sigma, okay, that's going to give you 2 is equal to sigma. So sigma is equal to 2. Okay, and if sigma is equal to 2, then mu is equal to 3 times 2, which is 6. So we have sigma equals 2, and mu is equal to 6. Okay, now I don't really feel comfortable with this uh, solving here, so I'm going to solve this in a slightly different way. I think the answer will be the same, because um, I always tell my students do not divide by a variable, because um, there will only be one solution here, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to say 6 sigma minus... 3 sigma squared is equal to 0. I can take, I can divide by 3, so I have 2 sigma minus sigma squared is equal to 0. So now I'm going to take out sigma as common. So sigma times 2 minus sigma is equal to 0. So either sigma equals 0, which doesn't make sense, or 2 minus sigma equals 0, so sigma equals 2. Got to have to write sigma now. Okay, so sigma equals 2 and mu equals 6. All right, so once you have formed this equation, okay, by using the information they gave us from here, we have then found, um, you know, solved the two equations simultaneously and found the value of sigma and mu. So sigma is 2, mu is 6. And that answers this question. It's quite a bit of a strange one. And I guess it's a bit of a, you know, this, 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 this paper is a bit weird because there's actually eight questions. Now, eight questions is not very common for a um, S1 paper. Normally you have six questions, seven max. So it's quite a lot of questions. Some of them are a bit sh on the short side, but, um, you know, that's a bit of a strange paper, to be honest, for that. Um, and there were a few kind of like a bit, challenging type questions but you know it's doable and hopefully when you get to do your exam you'll do well and experiencing these other type of questions will help you hopefully to be able to cope with your exam so now this was the last question on this paper other questions from this paper can be found um, by clicking on the link that will appear here at the end of the video and clicking at the link down here will give you questions which deal with normal distribution you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link and the link at the top here will take you to a video which shows you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for thank you for watching and see you soon